we also took on a decade ago uh, the interesting problem of making coronavirus uh, vaccines because we recognize these as enormous public health threats, and yet we have not seen the big pharma guys and the biotechs rushing in, into this space. So we, uh, we partnered with a group at the New York Blood Center and the Galveston National Laboratory to take on the big scientific challenge of coronavirus vaccines. And I say a scientific challenge because one of the things that we're not hearing a lot about is the unique potential safety problem of coronavirus vaccines. Uh, this was uh, first found in the early 1960s with respiratory syncytial virus uh, vaccines, at children, and it was done here in Washington with the NIH and Children's National Medical Center that some of those kids who got the vaccine actually did worse, and I believe there were two deaths as in, in the consequence of that study, because what happens with certain types of respiratory virus vaccines, you get immunized, and then when you get actually exposed to the virus, you get this kind of paradoxical immune enhancement phenomenon. And, what ha and, and we, we don't entirely understand the basis of it, but we recognize that it's a real problem for certain respiratory virus vaccines. That killed the RSV program for decades. Now the Gates Foundation is taking it up again. But when we started developing uh, coronavirus vaccines and our colleagues, we noticed in laboratory animals that they started to show some of the same immune pathology that resembled what had happened 50 years earlier. So, so we said, oh my God, this is gonna be problematic. But we collaborated with a unique group that figured out how to solve the problem, that if you narrow it down to the smallest subunit, the piece that of what's called the receptor binding domain that docks with the receptor, you get protection and you don't get that immune enhancement phenomenon. So we were really excited about that, and we proposed this to the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Uh, they, they funded it, and we wound up uh, actually uh, making and manufacturing in collaboration with Walter Reed Army Institute of Research a first-generation SARS vaccine. So SARS was the one that emerged in 2003. Um, uh, and then this new one, of course, we call the SARS-2 coronavirus. We had it manufactured, but then we could never get the investment to take it beyond that. Um, and then, uh, so that was really unfortunate because we had the vaccine ready to go, but we couldn't move it into the clinic because of, of lack of funding, because by then nobody was interested in coronavirus vaccines. When the Chinese started putting up the data on bioarchive in, in January, February, we saw very close homology between the two and realized that we may be sitting on a very attractive coronavirus vaccines. Now we're working with, again, with NIH and we'll work with BARDA and others to get the funding, but now we'll have that lag. And these clinical uh, trials are not gonna go quickly because of that immune enhancement. It's gonna take time. And so, uh, you know, all of, and unfortunately, some of my colleagues in the biotech uh, industry are making these inflated claims. You know, you've, you've seen this on, on the newspapers. We're going to have this vaccine in weeks or in this and that. What they're really saying is they can move a vaccine into clinical trials, but this will not go quickly because as we start vaccinating human volunteers, especially in areas where we have community transmission, uh, we're going to have to proceed very slowly, very cautiously. The FDA is on top of that. They have a great team in place at the Center for Biologics Evaluation Research. They're aware of the problem, but it's not going to go quickly. We're going to have to follow this very slowly, cautiously, to make certain we're not seeing that immune enhancement. So you know, now we're hearing projections a year, 18 months. Who knows? This is, this is not going to go quickly. The bottom line is, had we had those investments early on, uh, to carry this all the way through clinical trials years ago, we could have had a vaccine ready to go.